All right, everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be doing masks using the color selector node. So the color selector node is something that we haven't really seen in any of the other tutorials that we've done. Um, so we'll be adding it to various places, such as the ones that we've mentioned in the previous deformation videos. So we wanted to wait a little bit before we started adding it on there. So it is going to be pretty similar to what we've done in the past. So if we go over to the eyelid top here and um, basically the color selector node, which we can find inside of the node library, I just go and type that in. Uh, we're going to see it over here and it's going to accomplish the same purpose as one of the features inside of the color override. So it's basically a simplified color override. Uh, inside the color override, if we connect this here, we could find over here a lot of different things. Um, sometimes it was a little bit more difficult to access um, certain specific features and you had to kind of go out of your way to uh, render selected colors only, go and render selected colors. Uh, this is basically what the color selector is going to do. Um, we'll be able to pick some colors and make sure that only these filter out through that specific node. So there's also only a single port at the top and at the bottom. Um, so pretty useful when you don't want to necessarily separate the, um, the different features of your character in uh, the art layers and you want to do so using just the color. So let's get rid of that color override. We'll be using just the color selector for this one. Um, so what we're going to be doing is going into the color and for the eyelid, we'll be adding a mask around this area right here, just to make sure that uh, we mask off the portion of the eye uh, that is going to be covered up by this very mask. Um, so let's go over into our stroke tool. I'm going to activate the strokes here. You want to create a stroke around the eye here so we can adjust that one a little bit. Uh, we don't want to go inside of the eye here. We'll just go and connect it to the edge here. We don't want to mask this line, so we want to make sure that this falls just right. So let's go and see this one here. We may want to shove that one a little bit higher and inside that very same layer we'll take our paint bucket and i'll just grab my color that i've been using for the pivots i could use that for the cutters as well for masking so it's not a color that's going to be visible anywhere and i'm going to paint inside of this area so now i can see it directly on the layer because this is all on the line art nothing is masked and let's go over to our node view. So I'm going to need, as you can probably imagine, two color selectors. I'm going to need one to isolate this color right here and another one that will take only the mask. So let's go over here, bring in our color selector. The default setting for this one is to read only the colors that have been inserted in it. So if we go in our layer properties, we have a little bit of a different setup from what we had originally inside of the color override. So if I press on the plus here to add a color, I have uh, two possibilities. Well, three actually. I could add all the colors in there. I could access the palette of my character and go and select from this one the color that I want, or I could go specifically inside of my node here, and it's going to detect automatically which colors are being used. So that's a pretty useful one when you're not very sure as to which ones are being used inside of your layer. So for this one, I'll want to isolate just the line color. So it adds it in here. If ever you wanted to remove it, you could just write, you could just click on it and 
press the remove selected colors and that will remove it. So let's add that back in there. We're going to bring in another color selector and drag that over here. And I'll connect that to my eyelid. And inside this one, we'll be able to go and get our mask color. I found that usually it's a good idea to just put a little bit of an indicator just to make sure that we know which one is the mask. Um, we'll be connecting that through a cutter anyways, but uh, still a, a pretty nice thing to, uh, to be able to visually see it without having to go in the layer properties. Um, so from here, if I connect this in, now we can see the color and we'll be using that color to mask the shape of the eye. So this uh, entire thing here, and we'll also have, of course, uh, the pupil being cut inside of it. We'll want that to uh, happen as well. So we can do a regular system uh, for the eye here, nothing uh, very different from what we've done in the past. I'll just create a composite. I'll bring in both layers of my pupil I'm going to create another composite to connect those in here. And we'll have the pupil be cut by the shape of the eye. So let's just do that real quick as we've done it before. We're cutting the pupil inside the surface of the eye. Now, naturally, if we want the line to not be included in that we could separate the line and the color of the eye right here. Putting the line above using the color of the eye to be red at the back and be cutting away the shape instead. So now we should be able to move our pupil around inside the line this is all red through this connection here. When we select it, it becomes a shade of blue here so we know what is included in here. Now, the first color selector, same thing here, it gets highlighted, we can see what that is. Um, and we have the mask, which we don't want to see, but we want it to cut this portion here so we can go and grab our cutter bring that in here and we'll use that to cut away this portion of our eye here. So now we can lower that and this eye gets cut away. So this is going to be great for posing the blinks of our character later on. Of course, now at this point, now that we've created the, uh, the mask for the eye, we can just go and reconnect that temporarily to go and create our deformation. So again, using the envelope, I'll just go over here and create a bit of a shape that's going to surround that entire area, allowing us to modify the mask if need be. I'm going to create another little point here. And of course, we'll want to have control over the eye so we can just create a nice curve here that we'll be able to modify uh, to bend the shape of our eye. And once I'm done with that, we can just go back into our node view, disconnect that mask so that we don't see it, that it's only used as the mask. And from here, we'll be able to change the shape of our blink and then furthermore, change the one from the bottom of the eye right here to really go and create different types of expressions. So you guys can go ahead and do the other eye in the same way. And I'll see you in the next video for creating a similar system on the other part that we haven't touched yet. Uh, over here, just underneath the hips, we'll create the line with a cutter to mask away uh, the excess part coming over here. So I'll see you guys there.